The topic for today is tourism policy, its evolution in the Indian context and how it has evolved over the years. We will try to deep dive deep on the subject and see how various facets of tourism policy has helped India evolve as a country, evolve as a nation and help in various other domains, various other activities as well. Tourism introduction. Tourism, as you all know, is the most desirable human activity which is capable of changing the socio-cultural, economic and environmental face of the world. Tourism is one of the largest and fastest growing industries in the world. It has the potential to influence the living pattern of communities. It is one of the most important channels of cultural exchange which breaks down the barriers between people of different parts of the world. It is a collection of activities, services, industries that deliver a travel experience including transportation, accommodation, eating and drinking, retail shops, entertainment. The gamut is quite large and hospitality services provided for individuals or groups traveling away from home. India is a diverse country with over 1.3 billion people following various cultures, languages, festivals, religions. Equally diverse are categories of tourism activities as well that India offers to its people as well as people across the globe. Such diversity owes largely to the geographic, climatic and traditional multiplicity seen in India's 29 states and 7 union territories. In India, tourism sector was considered as an important sector only after independence and government introduced various schemes and plans for its development. The policy intervention in tourism development is quite apparent and has been followed religiously of late. India and tourism policy development. Development of tourism industry requires tourism planning. Obviously tourism planning leads to tourism development. Planning refers to methods and means used in making decisions about the future, about the times ahead. Tourism planning helps in problem solving and arriving at decisions which help planners in achieving desired objective. Planning for tourism is quite crucial. Several countries of the world, especially developing ones, have realized of late importance of tourism and benefits that it brings to us. The use of macroeconomic planning techniques for tourism sector are relevant quite far. Use of microeconomic methods for nationals economic development which have largely been utilized since 50s time after we were recopying from second world war did not always cover tourism development but of late we have seen tourism as among the biggest source of income generation, employment generation, regional development, foreign exchange and has become a major factor in balance of payments as well for many countries it has been attending attracting the attention of many governments as well as well as other interests in economic development tourism emerged as the largest global industry of the 20th century and is projected to grow even faster in the 21st century india has immense possibilities of growth in the tourism sector with vast culture and religious heritage varied natural attractions but a comparatively small role in the world tourism side. We are just eyeing 1% of the global tourism till date. Tourism policy strengthens the tourism sector and envisages new initiatives to make tourism the catalysts in employment generation, environmental regeneration, development of report, remote places and development of women, livelihood and other disadvantaged groups at large. It would lead to large foreign exchange earnings and create conditions for more foreign direct investments. We remove the barriers via tourism. The beginning of policy and development. Tourism planning in India was started almost closer to independence. The cautious and organized efforts to promote tourism in India were made in 1945 onwards when a committee was set up by the government under Sir John Sargent then education advisor to the government of India. Some of the highlights from his times 
were to decentralize the tourism avenues say so information bureaus be made closer to the attraction rather than at the state capital or say major towns another important highlight was opening up of diplomatic channels via tourism soft power we call it in today's time it was the start of systematic tourism development in india just see the timelines development after independence development took place after independence with ministry of transport taking the initial steps to develop tourism as a branch under its fold later divisions were formed thus further streamlining the tourism infrastructure making via making better roads and traffic umbrella tourism offices were opened in india and abroad and it was elevated to a separate department status in 1967 tourism ministry with a separate full time ministers was formed with department of civil aviation and department of tourism made therein five year plans the tourism planning approach has been evolving in second and third five year plans the sixth five year plan emphasizes tourism as an instrument for economic development integration and maintains social harmony after the 80s tourism activities gained momentum as employment generation was quite visible it became an apparent source of income foreign exchange earnings were going up and leisure industry as a whole was evolving government took significant measures to promote tourism industry this five years plan this five year plans inspired by soviet model of development from that era gave the required thirst and momentum for tourism development keeping a 20 year horizon in sight tourism policy of 1982 the first tourism policy was announced by the government of india in november 1982 mission of first tourism policy was to promote sustainable tourism as a means of economic growth social integration and to promote the image of india abroad as a country with a glorious past a vibrant pre present and obviously a even brighter future Tourism was recognized as an industry by the Planning Commission of India in June 1982. It became a separate subject in the 7th schedule of Constitution of India even though a number of its components are either in the union list, state list or in the concurrent list. Under the new policy, tourism was placed in the concurrent list. It provided a constitutional recognition to the tourism sector and help in channelizing development of tourism in a systematic manner by enabling central government to bring bring in legislation governing the activities of various service providers in the tourism sector inclusion of tourism in the concurrent list of the constitution of india was quite important milestone of the first tourism policy then national committee on tourism was formed In June 1986 the planning commission the then planning commission of india set up the national committee on tourism to prepare prospective plan for tourism sector the report recommended that the existing department of tourism would be replaced by the national tourism board and create separate cadre on indian tourism services to look after the functioning of national tourism board It also submitted proposal for partial privatization of the two airlines owned by the then government of India. By September 1987, central government declared more concessions for the tourism sector. This included tax exemptions on foreign exchange earnings from tourism, almost 50% off reduction on rupee earnings and 100% reduction on earning in dollars. Drastic reduction of tariff on imports of capital goods and concessional finance at the rate of 1 to 5% per annum quite significant considering the times the tourism development finance corporation was set up in 1987 with a corpus fund of almost rupees 100 crore tourism policy under the 7th five year plan under the 7th five year plan there were quite significant suggestions that were made some of these were to promote aggressive domestic tourism it laid stress on creating more beach resorts to conduct conferences trekking conventions and winter sports a lot of emphasis was made so that foreign tourists get attracted out of it, out here under the 8th five year plan to encourage tourism planning further 8th five year plan from 1992 to 97 emphasized 
that the private sector should increase its participation in the tourism sector. Union government provided various facilities for the development of it. This included announcement of the National Action Plan for the Tourism in 1992. Action Plan was announced in the month of May. Union government provided various facilities for the development of tourism sector. This included National Action Plan for Tourism that was announced in May 1992. The objective of this action plan for planning in Indian tourism were to develop tourism areas across socially and economically viable regions, to increase employment of which um, opportunities, to increase employment opportunities, to develop domestic tourism for budget and economic category, to preserve environment and national heritage to the best possible extent, obviously to encourage international tourism and to enhance India's image via tourism in best way possible. Not only this, there was a lot of emphasis laid on diversifying tourism products as well. Various policies advocated by the 8-5 year plan for tourism planning were related to development of these places, winter sports, beach resorts, wildlife, heritage and as, as mentioned, development of economic class travel as well. In 1993, Government announced further measures aimed at export promotion. The existing export promotion of capital goods scheme, better known as EPCG, was extended to tourism and related services. The first ever Indian Tourism Day was celebrated on January 25, 1998. Quite an important day as far as India is concerned. Announcement of National Tourism Policy 2002 by the government of India was a milestone in tourism planning. This tourism policy was based on a multifaceted approach. This included faster, speedy implementation of tourism project, project development, integrated tourism circuits, capacity building in the hospitality sector, and obviously new marketing strategies. Main aim was to position tourism as a major driver of economic growth. Government tried to achieve this by promoting domestic and at the same time international inbound tourism, developing tourism infrastructure, developing new destination, promotion of newer areas, niche areas like agro and rural tourism, new tourism circuits, public-private partnership. A lot of emphasis was paid on, paid on this very aspect. Main areas that government of India suggested in this policy were tourism product or destination development, national tourism policy 2002. Announcement of National Tourism Policy 2002 by Government of India was a milestone in itself. This tourism policy was based on a multi-sectoral approach. This included speedy implementation of tourism product development of integrated tourism circuits, capacity building in the hospitality sector, and obviously devising new marketing strategies. Main aim was to position tourism as a driver of economic growth. Government tried to achieve this aim by promoting domestic and international inbound tourism, developing tourism infrastructure, developing new destinations, promotion of niche areas like agro and rural tourism, new tourism circuits, and a lot of emphasis was paid on public-private partnership as well. Some of the major highlights were tourism product and destination development. The very policy emphasized to promote existing tourism products and destination. For the development of tourism products and destination, central government provided assistance to the state governments and large projects were being funded. Integrated development of tourism circuits was also thought of. Herein, again, central government provided funds to develop these tourism circuits of international standards. Assistance to large revenue generating projects. This policy again emphasized public-private partnership to undertake large revenue generation projects like convention centers, golf courses, cruises, tourist trains to name a few. Support to public-private partnership in infrastructure. This policy realized that public financial resources as well as technology and marginal talents are required for tourism infrastructure development. Government gave financial support to conduct study tours in India exhibitions, fairs, abroad promotion, publicity, things like this, which were unheard of. 10th and 11th five-year initiatives. 10th five-year plan working within the National Tourism Policy of 2002 promoted skill building by conducting training programs for hotel and food industries. 10th five-year plan 
promoted advent adventure tourism in the Himalayas. Beach tourism at coastlines. Wellness, to wellness tourism included traditional health practices like Ayurveda, shopping centers for traditional crafts and pilgrimage sports. So a whole ecosystem was thought of. Obviously, the 11th plan allocated more funds for tourism development as time evolved. With the extension further, this five-year plan tried to promote partnership between central, state and the private sector. As per the 11th plan document of planning commission, quite an important body at that time, they recognized tourism is the largest service industry in the country. Its importance lies in being an instrument for economic development, employment generation, obviously in remote and backward areas, so as to develop those ecotourism circuits. During 11th five-year plan, efforts were made to harness the full potential of this sector by improvising infrastructure, popularizing further the incredible India campaign in foreign countries, providing, promoting niche products such as mice, health, wellness centers, adventure tourism to name a few. The National Tourism Policy 2015. During previous policy formulations, a consistent complaint was that all the stakeholders have not been consulted while drafting these tourism policies or recommendation. During the 2015 policy time frame, a good effort was devoted for this very cause. Tourism was identified as a major propagator of growth trajectory as it affects many sections. Economic growth, employment, poverty elevation may be addressed via tourism in some form and format. After all, service sector is among the highest employment generator. Some of the highlights of the tourism policy laid out in 2015 were enhance the number of international tourist arrivals in a responsible, culturally acceptable and socially viable manner that is in sync with the environmental sustainability principles. India being a vast landscape and can offer varied experiences, efforts were laid on making it a year-round destination. The concept of repeat traveler was missing till date. How to make it mainstream was also thought of. This policy also laid emphasis on positioning India as a safe, welcoming and friendly destination for both domestic and international traveler. After all, major chunk is still the domestic tourist flocking one state to another. Emphasis was also laid to imbibe world-class hospitality with incredible India at heart. A meaningful, equitable, community participation approach be defined that joins center, state and destination stakeholders together. It spoke highly of skill development, use of information technology, marketing efforts for both domestic and international tourism, market research to lay down principles, to lay down future growth trajectories, good governance and international cooperation and most of it all, the destination development having all amenity what a tourist is looking forward to. So, we conclude, tourism development and tourism policy are closely interrelated aspects. Tourism development largely depends on tourism policy, how it has been formulated and executed. Tourism is quite important segment for the economy. Economic development of any nation, whether developing, developed or underdeveloped country, is significantly influenced by tourism sector. Therefore, every country in the world should formulate a number of tourism policy for the development of tourism sector. Indian government has undertaken a number of initiatives to attract both domestic as well as foreign visitors, expansion of tourism infrastructure, tourism spots, evolution of new tourism products, public-private partnership are some of the few measures that have been undertaken in post-independent period. Government of India, Department of Tourism laid a lot of emphasis on policy instruments towards development of tourism sector as a whole. Tourism was recognized as an industry by the Planning Commission of India and was included in the concurrent list of Indian constitution to provide constitutional recognition to the tourism sector and help in channelizing development of tourism in a systematic matter, in a systematic manner by enabling the central government to bring in legislation governing the activities of various service provider in this sector. As a result, tourism sector is increasing rapidly, attracting 
large number of visitors towards India and generating large employment and income opportunities. After this session, you have become familiar with tourism policy and its importance, the concept of five-year plans in India and its relationship to tourism. We dive deep on main elements of various tourism policies and plans and how they have helped develop tourism infrastructure and other allied sectors as well. As a follow-up task, we request you to study and collate how the National Tourism Policy of 1982, the National Action Plan of 1992, the National Tourism Policy of 2015 helped shape the strategic objectives as envisaged from time to time. Another question, what are some of the important marketing campaigns run by Indian tourism under its various tourism promotion policies from the recent past? Share their details and efficacy. Example, Atiti Devo Bhave, the Visit India campaign and the very recent Swadesh Darshan challenge laid down by our Prime Minister. Thank you so very much.